everyone, my name's Tamara Chambers, and this is Tamara Just Saw. And I went and saw a week late Shazam. I was deciding whether to do Shazam or Hellboy this week, and honestly, I wanted to do Hellboy more because I pretty much missed Shazam already last week by doing Pet Cemetery. I think everyone and their mothers have talked about this movie already, and I really love Hellboy, and I'm hoping that this is really great. However, it didn't line up with my schedule. So we're doing Shazam! I was gonna see this regardless of if I did an episode on it or not because it's been just getting the best reviews and I was really excited about it. I love hearing people praise DC. I love Marvel with all of my heart, but DC is like my OG love. That animated series of the Justice League. The DC ladies are really cool and they've been showcased a lot more than the Marvel ladies, I'll say. And so yeah, I love I love them both, um, I would say equally, but I was really excited to hear that a DC movie, a DC superhero film was doing really well. I'm also really excited for Detective Pokemon. Detective Pikachu? Detective Pokemon? Heh? Okay, Shazam. Let's get into Shazam. I knew going in that it was gonna be good. Uh, it's got amazing ratings on everything, and everyone that I've talked to has just loved it to death and seen it multiple times, and that's so exciting. Sometimes I think it's better to go into a film not knowing anything about it, specifically like what others are thinking about it, because that really shapes how I feel about a movie. If I know that people are loving it, I feel like I need to love it kind of deal, you know what I mean? I don't know if people really identify with that, but I, that is how I really feel like I, I, I need to stay away from other people's opinions on things, especially movies, because I get nervous that I'm going to say the wrong thing, which is stupid, because you're all tuning in for my opinion. That's dumb, Tamara. <laughs> I, though, I loved this movie. It was so cheesy in all the right ways. It was so engaging. It w was entertaining all the way through. It was fun, it was funny, it was heartfelt. The action was cool. It ruled. I love this movie. I wasn't expecting the amount of cheese we got, though. I was expecting it to be like kind of a sleek superhero film, and it wasn't that. Like, the opening shot of the Grand Wizard in his cool little grand wizard temple was so cheesy and a lot of it looked like, okay, here's what I'll say. I guess a lot of it in like 20 years, I think we're gonna look back on it and be like, that looks cheesy as hell. But I think in 20 years, we're also still gonna be really entertained by it. It's gonna hold up in that it's just so well done and so fun. So they leaned into that cheese and I just love it. I love cheesy movies that are good. I didn't get what I was expecting, but I don't know what I was expecting because I don't know anything about Shazam. Shazam is like, you know, one of the lesser known, I would say for, I mean, I don't know, I grew up with DC and I don't know much about Shazam at all. And so I went in kind of expecting like this sleek superhero with some comedy. I saw the trailers, of course, but I got something way, way, way less sleek and way more cheesy, which I loved. The cast sold this thing so much. I think, I don't know if it's just because it's the beginning of the year, but I feel like in a lot of these Tamara Just Saw episodes recently, this beginning of this year, I've been saying things like, oh, I just didn't get enough character development or I didn't like get to know the characters that we should have really gotten to know, blah, blah, blah. You get in here and there's six foster kids and you know all of them. You know everything you need to know about them. You get who they are as people, you get like a snippet of their background, you love them. It's so easy to connect with these characters and they spend barely any time on it. Just enough, so they don't graze over it, but you, you don't get, like you're not sitting there for this whole origin story. You get in there, you see the kids, you get to know them, we're moving on with their story, and I love that. I felt so connected to all of the people the whole time I was watching the film, and it made me love it so much more at the end when they turn into their own little Shazams. It was so good, that moment was amazing, and I really was not expecting that to happen. I didn't know that that was a thing Shazam could do. Seeing all the adult actors who are mimicking these children actors that we've grown to love during the film was so much fun too. They did such a good job with casting this, just all over, across the board. It's so well cast, so good. I loved the origin story for our villain. It's so messed up and so dark and uncomfortable. <laughs> you feel so bad for this little kid. And then you don't because he's a villain. 
And that was sandwiched yourself with a sentence I just said, wow. I really like the setup with that. I love that you're back in time because just a simple thing that he's got the magic eight ball. It kind of takes you back. You know you're not in today's current time. And his dad and brother are assholes and he gets so close to becoming the next Shazam and then the Grand Wizard is like, oh, well, you'll never be good enough. You're not Shazam. <laughs> so cheesy. And then the dad almost dies and then resents him his whole life and is like a big president and business man. And it makes sense. It's like quick, it's effective, it's funny, it's <laughs> up. And it's great. I love it. That's what I want in a villain origin story. I also think they handle that all really well because this is a character that a lot of people don't know. I'm a firm believer that if you're making a superhero film and you think that the audience doesn't know everything about that hero, you don't need to baby step them through it. You can do it in a smart way that you, you still get some origin, of course, but it, so I say this a lot with Guardians of the Galaxy. I think no one basically knew, like no one in the general populace knew the origin story of Guardians of the Galaxy, but they did it in such a good way that it, it didn't linger too long. It wasn't like baby stepping us through. This was similarly done. I think it was so, so good. Super fun, super light, and then it wasn't light as well. It was pretty messed up, but light in a way that wasn't just like, okay, we get it. Can we just, it's been two hours. I would like to see the actual movie now. It was done in such a good way. They have this giant montage of him using his powers when he first finds out that he's Shazam. And it's such a good sequence. He's button mashing. They're playing video games and he's button mashing. It's like the Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or one of those that you button mash on. And he's just like got super speed and so he can like button mash the shit out of it. And it's so funny. The Don't Stop Me Now, Mr. Fahrenheit sequence in this movie is one of the best sequences I've seen in a film in years. It was so joyful. So I, <laughs> I wasn't gonna write notes and then I was like, oh, there's too many good points. I'm gonna forget it. I'm filming this tomorrow. So I started like typing notes on my phone with my brightness all the way down like a jerk. You shouldn't have your phone out in freaking films, Tamara. Okay, but anyways, I wrote joyful so many times in the notes. I was just having the best time with it. Best cheesy, so, so cheesy, but man, I'm cheesing myself. That's a thing I actually wrote. Ridiculous. A group of five foster kids turning into superheroes all at once is a <laughs> dream. Joyful as hell, wow. I was really feeling it. Our villain calling the foster family's home a diverse shithole seemed intentional. I love that the villain at the end is most closely tied to Envy. He's got the seven deadly sins around him, helping him fight, but Envy is the one. I think that's really relatable. I don't know, that's something that I struggle with for sure. Somebody in the comments, oh, no, really not gluttony, Tamara? It's funny, it's, it's hilarious, it's so funny. Oh, there's some really deep shit with like him and his actual mom that he's trying to find and 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 the foster family is just so 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 lovable and maybe a little unbelievable in how like wonderful that situation is. It was really beautiful to see and I just loved it. I loved it so much. I was really upset because the the only showing I could go to last night was at 9:45 and I don't like seeing movies crazy late because then I can't usually film when I get home afterwards. It's just too late. I'm an old woman. I'm 28, going on 57. Usually I'm in bed playing video games at that time. Gosh darn it. I was upset and I went in and I was like, okay, fine, well, let's just get through this. It was amazing, of course, obviously. I'm such a curmudgeon about seeing films. <laughs> I loved it, it was amazing. I'm really excited to see Hellboy and I might do something on my personal channel for that, or if there's nothing great coming out next weekend, maybe I'll do it next weekend for Tamara Jessa, but I wanted to catch up with this as well. I'm also very excited about Pokemon. Also, Dora the Explorer? What? I don't know what to think, but I will say this. If Swiper is not in that goddamn movie, I am walking out. I love when people say they're gonna walk out of movies. It's like, well, but you already bought the ticket, so no one's affected by that except for you. <laughs> So bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next week. Um, bye. Say my name so my powers may flow through you. Ike. Ike. <laughs> hey, bud. Oh, hey, Wendy. <laughs> yes.
such a beautiful okay Wendy none of that 